As we mentioned, the Rescue CPR system is a device combination that provides IPR therapy during cardiac arrest. You've just learned about the Rescue Pod ITD-16. Now let's cover how the Rescue Pump works and how to use it to perform active compression decompression or ACD CPR. Compressions and decompressions are both critical phases for optimizing blood flow during CPR. Incomplete recoil may be due to a stiff or non-compliant chest, broken ribs, compressions that are too fast, or rescuers who fatigue and begin resting on the chest. If the chest wall does not recoil completely, it results in decreased blood flow back to the heart. The rescue pump is intended to address this problem by promoting complete and active recoil of the chest. It allows the rescuer to actively compress and then actively decompress or lift the chest during CPR. The rescue pump is the only FDA approved device that allows the rescuer to perform ACD CPR with a lifting force of 10 kilograms. The rescue pump is comprised of a suction cup and handle. A force gauge guides compression and lifting forces. The green area indicates compression forces and the purple area indicates lifting forces. The bottom of the red arrow indicates the amount of force being applied. Here we see the red arrow at zero, indicating that no compression or lifting force is being applied. An audible two-tone metronome is available to help guide the compression rate. Push the button once to turn it on, and once more to turn it off. The compression rate for rescue CPR is 80 per minute. This rate is a little slower than what is recommended for manual CPR in order to allow more filling time for the enhanced preload. Because 80 per minute is slower than what you're used to, it's important to use the metronome to help achieve the proper rate. To perform ACD CPR, first assure the patient's clothing is removed from the chest. Next, place the suction cup in the middle of the chest, making sure the lip of the suction cup is above the xiphoid process. Make sure that defibrillation pads do not interfere with placement. Then, get into position. The correct body position for ACD CPR is the same as for manual CPR. Your shoulder should be directly over the sternum with your arms straight. Because you will be a little higher above the patient, shorter rescuers may benefit from elevating their knees on padding. Bend at your waist and use your entire upper body to compress. Use enough force to achieve the proper depth, and then note how much force is required to achieve this depth. Just as with manual CPR, the amount of force will vary for each patient depending on how compliant their chest is. For reference, the amount of force needed to compress an adult's chest two inches is approximately 30 kilograms for a soft or supple chest, 30 to 40 kilograms for a chest of average compliance, and 40 to 50 kilograms for a stiff chest. For this patient, 40 kilograms is being applied to achieve a two inch compression depth. For most patients, 40 kilograms will be sufficient to achieve a two inch compression depth. To decompress, once again, use your entire upper body and lift with enough force to actively re-expand the chest to minus 10 kilograms on the force gauge. It is not necessary to lift more than that. This is what the force gauge looks like with 10 kilograms of lift being applied. While you're learning ACD CPR, begin by compressing and lifting slowly to make sure your body position is correct and to get a feel for the proper compression and lifting forces. Once you feel comfortable with that, then you can begin to increase your speed. Ultimately, the goal is to compress and lift 80 times per minute. Once you have your technique down, Turn on the metronome. Compress on one tone and lift on the next. An easy way to get coordinated with the tones is to think push, lift, push, lift, push, lift with each alternating tone. Here's what proper ACD CPR should look like. Now here's a few tips to keep in mind as you learn ACD CPR. First, don't grip the handle harder than necessary. Hold the rescue pump firm enough to control it, but don't overstrain your grip or forearms. Second, the tendency is to compress faster than you have to. 
Use the metronome to make sure you achieve the proper cadence. Third, remember to actively lift after each compression. This is not something you're used to doing, so make sure you actively decompress enough to see the force gauge move beyond zero to minus 10 kilograms. Remember though, it's not necessary to lift more than that. Fourth, rotate duties at least every two minutes or more often if you're tired. Fifth, rescue or body position is important. If the patient is on a stretcher, it will need to be in the lowered position in order for the rescuer to be properly positioned above the patient. If the patient is in a bed or on a gurney, the rescuer will need to be sufficiently elevated over the patient. And always make sure that the patient is on a hard surface anytime you're providing CPR. After each use, the suction cup may be either replaced with a new one or cleaned. See the instructions for use for the proper way to disinfect both the handle and suction cup after use. Studies have shown that we can achieve good suction on most patients. Because of this, you may notice some reddening or bruising under the patient's skin under the suction cup. This is common and should not be cause for concern during CPR. Even when performed correctly, there is always a chance to potentially break ribs no matter what type of CPR you are performing. If you suspect rib fractures, check to make sure you're compressing in the proper position and then continue. The suction cup may actually help with the chest wall recoil in the event that rib fractures occur. If the chest is excessively hairy, it may be necessary to shave it quickly to remove some of the hair, but an average amount of chest hair is usually not a problem. If the chest is excessively wet or diaphoretic, you can wipe it down quickly with the patient's clothing or a towel. In less than 10% of the time, it may be difficult to achieve a good suction. Check to make sure the lip of the cup is not too low on the chest. Remember, it must be above the xiphoid process. If the cup dislodges, reposition it and then pull up with less force on the next compression. Even if you are not able to pull up with a full 10 kilograms of lift, simply coming back to neutral will be helping the patient. If suction difficulties are distracting you from performing good CPR, then discontinue use of the device and revert back to high quality manual or automated CPR. Okay, let's quickly summarize the key elements of performing ACD CPR in adults. Use the metronome to guide the compressions at a rate of 80 per minute. Compress with enough force to achieve a depth of two inches. Actively lift to minus 10 kilograms on the force gauge. Make sure you are properly positioned above the patient. And finally, bend at the waist, keep your arm straight, and use your entire upper body to both compress and lift.